are listening to Talking Hoosier Baseball, a podcast it's by fans from the iubase.com website. For anyone wanting more information on the Indiana University baseball program. <laughs> Welcome. We are recording this on Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020. I am Carl James, joined by stats guru Cassidy Palmer, the creator of IUBase.com, Josh Bennett, and Indiana University baseball left-handed pitcher Ty Bothwell, who is our guest tonight. The Hoosier Giants are the feature in this week's Hoosier highlights. Uh, Alex Dickerson had a pinch hit home run last night to bring his total to 10 on the short season. He is hitting 295 with 27 RBIs and an OPS of 964. Caleb Berger now has 12 consecutive appearances out of the bullpen without giving up an earned run. Uh, his whip is just a hair over one at 1.02. Uh, and Caleb has been designated as the opener slash starter for the Giants game tonight. Uh, the Giants uh, are only a tiebreaker now out of the wild card picture as of this morning. Uh, so Alex and Caleb have become key pieces for this team while going into the final stretch. Uh, in other news, IU Libraries and IU Archives hosted a Zoom event yesterday, uh, taking those who are there on a virtual tour with the uh, 1922 IU baseball team to Japan. Uh, while I knew there was a lot of good info from that trip, I hadn't realized that IU has play-by-play -play records of every game on that trip. Um, a video event will be made available uh, later this week, and I'm sure we're, we'll share it uh, on our social media platforms. Uh, it was a very interesting event, uh, and uh, every time I dig into that particular team and that trip that they took, I find and learn something new, so it's pretty cool. All right, well now Cass will give us some statistical history on Ty Bothwell. Thank you, Carl. Uh, I took a look at Ty's summer stats uh, from, from this summer down in Macon. Uh, according to the Coastal Plain League stats, Ty had nine appearances, uh, at, totaling 22 innings of work. He had a 286 ERA, striking out 36 over 22 innings while only walking six. Uh, for those doing the math at home, that is 14.7 uh, Ks per nine innings, which is pretty darn good. So, Ty, welcome to, to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Happy to be uh, so here. Good to have you. Uh, so, Ty, um, how did you end up with the Macon Bacon this year? Um, so, the head coach for the Macon Bacon that uh, we I played for this year, I was fortunate enough to play with him or play for him la uh, the previous summer in Nebraska for the Western Nebraska Pioneers. And he's had – well, Jimmy Turk is his name. He's had numerous guys uh, – come in and play for him under coach Parker and he thought that it would be a good idea for him to send me to Nebraska for the summer my freshman year and he and I created a good bond together and I uh, I was happy to go with him for to and follow to the make and bacon once he got the opportunity to go and coach down in the coastal plains so so was there anything you were working on in particular this summer Oh, I was working on a lot of things. Um, we, uh, well, since, since our, you know, season was able or was cut short, um, like I, I didn't feel like I was able to get a whole lot of innings in collegiately, which was really unfortunate. And um, I mean, for the team and for me too. And I just felt like I needed to get to work just because um, like it was just, it was time for me to step up, you know, with this being my, well, I guess 
technic it would be my junior year, but it's like my third freshman year. I've lost count at this point. Uh, <laughs> I can't even tell. So my my plan was to just go out and you know really go after hitters and just make sure that I'm throwing strikes and like trying to get in counts early and just uh, just trying to overpower hitter uh, hitters the best as I could and work on my uh, my craft as well. So I think I was able to like kind of limit the walks in doing so. Like that was the biggest thing is like I wanted to cut down the walks, especially since uh, like I had had quite a few during the fall and during the during our season. Like one main thing that always came back to haunt me was me not being consistent in the strike zone. So I I kind of like tuned in and trying to do that and then kind of helped my mental game as well. Cause I was, I, w I was not really a huge, like headstrong uh, pitcher in the past. And I feel like me being down there with a lot of the older guys and just being able to talk with them and work with the pitching coach down there and Turk, like really opened my eyes to a lot of things and it was able to help me um, progress mentally. So what was it like having four Indiana guys all on the same team together this summer? Oh, geez. Uh, it was, it was pretty eventful. Like we, uh, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't interchange the guys that came down with me at all. I mean, I loved every single one of them and I still do. I mean, if anything, like I feel like I've created a better bond between all four of them and They've helped me a lot. Uh, I mean, they've been helping me now and like my, mainly in, in making with, uh, with how, with how I was able to, you know, progress mentally. Like I said before, like I owe a lot of that to, to those four guys and just like going through and making like minor tweaks in the mechanics to like try and get as much as I could out of it. And if I were, if I was struggling a little bit, like they were always there to help me and vice versa. Like we were all, we were all there for each other. And I think that's what produced the success we had down there. And it was just great to see everybody like progressing uh, along the same lines as well and just having fun and doing what we do down there. So Well, Ty, several of us got to see your uh, gem of an outing in the 2018 uh, AA state title game for Boone Grove at Victory Field. Uh, can you kind of walk us through what that game was like for you? Oh, don't. History. That's like, that's, that's how I would sum it up. Just because like uh, Boone Grove's never gone into any, like had any uh, state titles in anything but bowling, I think. And I don't know if I still don't know if that's considered an IHSA sport or not, but like it was like a big deal for everybody to to go to that game and be a part of it, and especially for the guys that were on that team. Like we we took it to heart. Like our coach, he was he was big into like loving each other and like being like having every every each other's backs and you know making sure that we're keeping each other accountable. And from day one, that <laughs> Coach Anton, he was just like, all right, like our goal this year is we're going to win the state championship. And everybody's looking at him like, what the heck's this guy talking about? Like, I don't think we've really even done anything outside of sexuals yet. Like, who's, who's this guy think we are? <laughs> like, he doesn't even know us. <laughs> we're just a bunch of band of misfits. And, I mean, that's what we truly were until – he got a hold of us and put us all through this like huge training regiment. Like we were doing stuff that I have never like even seen before. And I mean, it, to the guys that like trusted the process, like it, it proved to be like a, a great asset to have. And, like you've seen so much growth in all the guys that were on that team that really cared. And fortunately enough, we were able to get to the state championship and, I mean, it was, that was a hot day. Like I'm pretty, like, I don't remember like the third through the fifth at all. Like I, like that's just a blank to me, but uh, like 
we were we were all going in with the uh, with the mindset that we were going to win that game because we were we felt like we were we were just more prepared than the other team at that point. And I mean, no, we didn't even know who Southridge was. Like with them being like a southern team, like we like half the teams that are between that and uh, like the other teams that they faced, we had no clue who anybody was just because we came from the other half of the state. So going in, um, like we had the same game plan as just kind of stick to the fastball and the curveball because I guess, um, like, I mean, those were my, those were my powers at the time. Um, and like, I was just able to beat a lot of their guys up in the zone, except for Colson Montgomery. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am sorry. I, I'm just very happy that he's going to be coming with us next year just because that dude just, I could not figure out a way to get that guy out that day. And I mean, I, like between him and Shank, like I became good friends with the, those two and we've talked about it, but like that game, that game was, I thought we were in a, we had that game in the bag all the way up until the seventh inning when, you know, start, stuff started hitting the fan and, uh, you know, some strings of bad luck. And I mean, that's just the way the game is sometimes. So. Fortunately enough, for we were able to take home the win, and uh, I mean, I'm very gl- grateful to have every single one of my guys have my back during that game. And uh, like it was just, like I said, it was history. Like we all we all felt like kings. <laughs> That's, and it was a great feeling. So, so Ty, was baseball always your focus? Did you play any other sports growing up? Uh, I mean, I don't come from a extremely athletic background. Um, I did play other sports when I was younger. I was, I was a little bit into soccer. I always thought that soccer was going to be, you know, something I wanted to get into. And then, uh, I got kicked out of the league because they said I was too rough. So, uh, (laughs) soccer was out, (laughs) but then I just started playing baseball more and more and, like I didn't really get serious about it until I was probably about 13. And like, I realized that that was, that's what I wanted to go into, but I played, let's see, I wrestled my, my, my eighth grade and freshman year of high school. So I wasn't, I felt like a lot of uh, my freshman year um, was just me trying to get my feet wet into like baseball and trying to, you know, stay, stay in a, athletic shape that way I can you know try and make the varsity team as a freshman and then move on from there but um because I mean I was I was a I was a little like shrimp I mean we're talking worse than uh worse than when I came into IU which may be hard to believe but I think wrestling helped me out and kind of put me into a better shape until I ended up hurting my back playing or uh wrestling against somebody I think it was against Portage or something like that and yeah that messed me up real good and then I decided to go try and play volleyball because apparently we had a boys volleyball team and I loved it um I don't know why why I didn't try and play it earlier especially my freshman year but uh I lettered three years for volleyball and I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for the world. Like I said, I don't know why. It was just probably my second favorite, most favorite sport just because of how, you know, active everything is all the time. Like you, like everybody's got to be moving. Like you got to be thinking on every play and like it's quick pace. It's not like baseball where you got, uh, you, you're in control the whole time as a pitcher. Like you gotta, you gotta make sure everybody's accounted for and like doing their job. And like one little slip up, you're going to, you're going to lose a point, but I loved that sport. And, and uh, I mean, I was, I wasn't the best at it and I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't have ever like even touched the front row to be a, a hitter just because of my, you know, my stature. Cause like five, five, eight and with like a negative vertical jump, like didn't really get the job done in the front row. But, uh, 
apparently made it work. I enjoyed I enjoyed playing that, and then uh, and then right after volleyball, I started up with baseball, doing like fall workouts and stuff, and just kind of like made the shift back and forth until uh, eventually uh, my senior year. So. So Ty, after being the key player for your high school team as a senior, uh, you weren't on the roster for your first year at IU. And a lot of guys in that position tend to make the choice to transfer to a program where they're more likely to see playing time. Instead, you focused hard on improving your game and you made the roster the next year. What drove you to stick with IU in that situation? That is, okay. I mean, that was a little bit of a tough question. Um, like I, I always like go back and think about it as well. Like why did I stick back? I think mainly it was just the trust I have in the coaches to get me to where I need to be and to progress. Because I always thought it was like, okay, if I'm not going to be able to play here, what makes me think that I'm going to be playing at another division one school and what, and if, if I'm going to stay here, what do I need to do personally in order to, to make the changes needed and necessary in order to, you know, make a positive impact on the team and eventually make a roster spot. So my, my freshman year, like, I, to put it simply, I just wasn't ready. Like, I had – I just needed to grow a lot more and mature and mentally, like, I was a zero like I was I had struggled so much like mentally and I would have like a lot of um, a lot of doubt in myself instead of just trusting my abilities so I think the big change that I had going into my sophomore year is uh, I had a, created a better mindset which was not the best but it was better than what I had going into my freshman year but I, yeah, like I would say my main reasons for like staying would probably just be like the coaches and uh, the lifting program that we have here. Like I always think of it as like, you know, the highest tier that you can go. And with the knowledge of Parker as a pitching coach, like I know that he's going to get me to where I need to be and he's going to have the best ways to do it. And, and along with that like all the guys around me like I, I I enjoy and I love all the guys that are around me it's just such a great atmosphere to have and like to be around all those guys that are so uh, supportive and are willing to help and uh so it was it was just a no-brainer to stay I had thought about leaving but like I always, I just couldn't do it just because of all the connections that I have here and um, like how, how much I really wanted to play here. Cause I, I, I don't know, I guess I just had that mindset that I just wanted to kind of prove, prove somebody wrong and like to prove to them that I belong here. And I guess that paid off eventually. So, <laughs> yes. so <clears throat> heading into uh, your third year, whether we call it your uh, COVID <laughs> freshman year or whatever it ends up being called. Uh, what kind of a role are you hoping to play with the 2021 Hoosier team? I haven't really um, given that a whole, mu whole bunch of thought yet. Um, I mean, Parker and I have been talking about um, what different roles that he could see me as. And I mean, there, there's a wide variety that he thinks that I can – uh, excel in but you know I think um, just having like a major impact would be great I mean with with all the guys that are coming back like there's obviously going to be a lot of uh, of the same pitchers and it's just it just means that I'm either going to have uh, I'm going to have to work twice as hard to try and get a predominant role but um, like the main main thing that I want to do is just make sure that I'm for whatever for whatever role that I'm given. I just want to be able to make sure that I'm the best at what I'm given and to make sure uh, 
ultimately just help the team. Like that's my biggest goal is to just make sure that I'm able to help my team the best way or the best as I can to make sure that um, like I'm either given my, whether it be me going into a game to make sure I'm giving my team the best chance to win or to stop the bleeding as some people call it, or just like helping guys, like future guys to like, uh, either like, I wouldn't say like coach them up, but just like give them the help that they might need in order to make the team better in the future. Like it, there's a, there's a wide variety of things that I'm prepared to do to help the team. And like, as of right now, like I, I don't really have like any, any set role in mind that I want to be given until, you know, that's decided for me just because I trust I trust our coaches um, beyond belief. And I know that they, they're going to make the right decisions and whatever that may be, I'm going to be ready for uh, whatever they're prepared to give me. And I'm going to do my best to excel at that. Uh, so Ty, like a lot of uh, college pitchers, you were a really good hitter in high school. Uh, do you miss hitting at all? Of course I do. I mean, what pitcher doesn't? Like, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't the best hitter, you could say. Uh, but, I mean, I did hit one home run in high school, and I was pretty proud of that. But uh, <laughs> other than that, like, I mean, I always found hitting fun, um, especially when pitchers threw fastballs. So once people or once pitchers started to throw the off speed stuff, I couldn't touch it. So, I mean, I do miss hitting, but I also know that I'm way over my head at this point and there's just no going back because some of the guys, especially on our team, like there's just no way that I even like touch the ball off any of them. So every once in a while I'll go into the hitting facility and put some, put a couple balls on the tee and use like the, like the light loaded uh, ax bat and just try and <laughs> see if I can hit it at about 103 or whatever. But that's about all I can do at this point. But um, yeah, I, I do miss hitting, but I mean, it's for the best at this point. So. <laughs> uh, so as you were growing up, uh, were you a fan of any particular MLB pitchers or did you model your game off of anyone in particular? Um, there's, are we like, um, we've had like comparisons that Parker's had us do, uh, especially over quarantine of guys that we see ourselves to compare as the most to. And um, like my, my comparison that I was able to come up with was Jose Quintana. And that's just mainly for like the body type and pitching style. Like a lot of the stuff that he, he does, I do as well, except he's at the professional level. So like my goal is to try and ex, uh, excel and perfect myself to try and achieve his status. But uh, two other guys that I have always like loved watching would be uh, Billy Wagner because he's short and throws super hard. And, um, you know, I'm short and want to throw hard. <laughs> so I've always wanted to, like, I've always watched him just to, just to be like, man, like, how does, how does he do that? And what, what do I need to do to get to where he was, which I'm not saying that I need to throw 101 like he did, like maybe like 94, I'd be happy with at this point. But um, I guess that's all just in the process. And uh, thir the third guy would probably be Sean Manaya. He was always one guy that I looked up to uh, during travel ball because he was he went he went through the same travel organization as I did and he grew up in a small town uh, that was probably about like 30 40 minutes from me and um, like it was it's I went and watched him at a at a game once with uh, my travel ball coach who had known who knows him personally. And I was just like, man, like this guy is just mesmerizing to watch. And it's just, it just kind of like blew my mind that um, 
a guy from such a small town and went through the same like travel ball organization as me was able to pitch at such a high level. And so he's, he's always one guy that we would look up to um, for my team personally for travel ball. And um, like you would always hear the coaches be like, who's going to be the next Mania and all that. So like he was just one guy that I would always try and follow and uh, like look after. So like he was always, he was always the one, like mainly the one guy that I would enjoy and uh, try and keep up with growing up. Uh, what are you majoring in at IU? Animal behavior. So, and uh, to be honest, I love it. Like I made the shift. I was a bio, just a regular biology major, but I made the shift and uh, turns out um, animal behavior was a lot more of a track that I want to go on. So I'm just trying to see how it all shakes out at this point. So on that same line, Ty, um, once your baseball career wraps up, you know, no matter how far out that is, uh, what do you plan on doing? Well, with that uh, animal behavior degree, hopefully, uh, I would love to work at a zoo with reptiles and amphibians. I've always been an animal lover, grown up on a farm. I was always, like, I would tend to uh, horses and uh, work with some of the cattle. But we didn't, we would, we would, uh, we wouldn't really like farm, I guess, I guess you could say that we, I guess you could say it was more like a ranch that I grew up on because my parents, they were big into horseback riding and, um, like roping and barrel racing. But, um, like I've always been around animals and I've always enjoyed like the company of them. And when I went out, when I went on a trip down to Florida, when I was super young, like I was, I saw all these little, these little things uh, running around scurrying and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I want to catch them. They all, turns out they were all green and olds that were all like native to Florida. And I just like, I just enjoyed uh, catching them so much that uh, I don't know, I've just always loved lizard sense. And I mean, like I would go out and go frogging out of my pond. I'd go try and catch turtles. I, I have, uh, I have, uh, I've had, couple lizards in the past that I've owned and then I have two down with me <laughs> a leopard gecko and a Jackson chameleon who's who I just bought um a couple couple weeks ago and he's he's starting to you know get used to the environment he's just hanging out and they don't really like each other too much which was kind of expected but it it's a uh, it's definitely something I've always wanted to do is to work with animals, especially uh, reptiles and amphibians. Um, like I would, I would personally love to continue working with lizards if I were to work at a zoo and specifically um, the indie zoo. Like I've always, I've always liked uh, that zoo. I've gone there a couple times and like, I just feel like they, uh, they need, more of like a, um, let's see, I wouldn't say like exotic reptile exhibit, but more of like a rainforest style uh, enclosure. Cause I mean, I was kind of, I was kind of sad that I wasn't seeing as many uh, like rainforest uh, lizards and um, like that's one thing that I would definitely try and look forward to doing if uh, I was able to give the ch be given the chance to work there is to try and make that the best it can be and try and give back to my, through my love of lizards and uh, amphibians. So. Very cool. Yes. So Ty, Coach Parker uh, has made a point of talking about the improvement you showed after your first year at IU. Uh, what specifically have you learned from Coach Parker. Okay, so like like I said before, like I will I I will always trust that guy. Like he is, I I would say that he's kind of like a lifeline, just because like 
whatever whatever he says like he he knows what he's talking about um and like one one of the biggest things that he has helped me with is like I said the mental game was always uh in a struggle and he would always reiterate it to me like you gotta you gotta stay headstrong you gotta focus you gotta you gotta stop being such a nutcase out there and like I, I just never really never really fully grasped that I guess the words just didn't click until um until you know it was too late and then I wasn't uh able to uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to like I said you said well I wasn't able to make the roster my freshman year but my sophomore year I was able to show such incredible growth just because I became more confident with my abilities and I think a lot of that helps or a lot of that was um, me going out and playing for the pioneers that uh, after my freshman year and just um, being able to, you know, like realize that I, like I'm just as capable as any of the other guys on this team and that I have, I have uh, my own stuff that I'm able to bring to the table to and just make sure that, you know, I'm not, you know, being such a nutcase out there. <laughs> like that was, like that, like I said, that was probably the main thing. And uh, he helped me through a lot of that stuff. Uh, physically, uh, he cleaned up my mechanics, and we we've been working on it, or we have been working on it uh, that f freshman year. But I couldn't really figure out, like, I don't know what it was. If it was just me not being able to click uh, at the time, or I'm just a stupid lefty or whatever. Like I couldn't, it was just having, having trouble, um, like being able to figure out like how to use my legs and my body effectively as well as I should. And like, I had been going through all these different changes. I, I kept trying to change my mechanics over and over again. So I was never in like a repeatable, uh, status. Like I was, I was always constantly changing and like one day he's just like, dude, like stop, like, you're fine where you're at. Like, just stay there and don't change anything. Cause once you start changing little things, then you're going to start, you know, it's going to be like a domino effect. You're not going to be able to figure it out. And you're going to take a long time to try and be able to re, you know, like not recalculate, but just like recalibrate everything. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So he, he worked with me a lot with uh, like being able to use my legs and uh, he showed me, he's been showing me different grips and um, like I was able to learn a couple or uh, a new couple new pitches actually like because they just keep they just keep changing and they keep getting better and better in my opinion and a, a lot of that I owe to Parker so well along those lines what is your pitch mix look like now um so I still I still have my uh, you know generic four seam fastball um, and my curveball, but I think more recently like I was able to you know really really dial in my changeup and my slider because I've always been I to be truthful like I've like I've only had like the fastball on the curveball in my arsenal, like the, the change up and I guess the slider that I learned last year was just all, it was just like kind of a show me pitch. Like I never really, you know, utilized it as much as I could, but between those four pitches and then uh, Parker working with me on each individual one to, you know, to perfect them and fine tune them. Like um, I think that they will be really helpful, especially uh, and we'll find out during the fall and all and whatnot when we start doing uh, our um, inner squad games to see to really put them to the test and see like how how great they have become. But I'm feeling pretty confident with those four pitches right now, especially since I've just been able to you know really like each day just fine tune them more and more and um, like I've just. Like I said, I'm feeling more comfortable throwing my changeup and slider now to where I don't have to just rely on my fastball to, you know, try and, you know, throw hitters off and try and get as, 
as many swings misses up in the zone with that, like I'm able to, you know, break down a curveball or throw a change up away and or throw like a slider into righties. Like I was not able to do that last year. Like I was I couldn't even I couldn't even command my fastball, let alone my other three pitches last year. And that was the biggest thing that I was able to uh, fine tune during the summer, like I said, that is just being able to, you know, perfect those, those pitches and, you know, try and make the best of what I had instead of trying to like, you know, push forward and learn new pitches. Like I, I tried to, I tried out a two seam, which I haven't really thrown in bullpen yet, but like I've thrown them in, um, in catch play and they're okay. So that's something I might, uh, utilize in the future if I can, uh, find that pitch and have a good feel for it. But yeah, mainly those four pitches and, um, and I'm able to, let's see. And I'm more than willing to throw all four of those to opposite sides of the plate, especially the different uh, lefties or righties now, which I wasn't able to do last year as well. Like I, especially with my slider, I wasn't able to, throw my slider to a right just because I've had I had like the fear that I was just going to leave it hanging and get it mashed like I did when I first learned it in the summer after my freshman year way too many line drives and home runs off that thing so we uh we had to shut that down and just throw it to lefties but I think it's improved since then so well that will do it for this edition of talking Hoosier baseball uh, read up on Indiana baseball at iubase.com. Follow us on Twitter at CU at the Bart and at iubase17. On Instagram, we're iubase. And you can subscribe to the Talking Hoosier Baseball channel on YouTube featuring these video podcasts, summer league games, uh, game clips, uh, game day media availabilities, and more. Um, for Ty Bothwell, Josh Bennett, and Cassidy Balmer, I'm Carl James. See you at the Bart.